So what is Definity and the internet computer? Yeah, so the internet computer is a blockchain technology that is a network of blockchains that you have these canisters uh, running on. The idea is that the canister looks much more like being a cloud computer than just being a smart contract. Their principles are their storage should be a lot less. You can put all the content you want inside their network because it is a distributed set of blockchains. It's much lower gas fees effectively. And in fact, they use something called a reverse gas model, which means that the individual canister the smart contracts basically, are the ones that are holding on to the gas. They call them cycles. And you can have users using applications that are running on IC without having them have to be onboarded or, or pay gas at all. It's a neat technology. It's part of what I consider to be weird crypto, right? It's outside that zone of what we traditionally consider crypto of like in that Bitcoin, EVM, maybe Solana as sort of the top three models for it. Uh, and this becomes like one of the others that's sort of interesting and, and, and different. And I think has some really neat potential. I think right now it's got like a market cap around a billion or maybe a little less. I mean, it's the thing about it as a financial instrument is that it has lost 95 plus percent of its value from its 52 week high. Compare that with Bitcoin, which has lost about 67% of its value from its 52 week high. And that's that means a value retention on Bitcoin side about 33% percent and value retention on Fendi of like closer to three to four percent. That's like a 10x difference in like being able to retain value. So certainly Defendi is still trying to figure out like where it's creating value and, and in its place in the crypto space. Is it worth talking about um, your project? Yeah, sure. So the project we presented uh, is called DTI, Decentralized Time Travel. The insight that we had was that uh, this internet computer thing ha has a number of aspects that are different from other blockchains. Like I say, it's weird. And one of the ways it's weird is that you can invoke any a smart contract uh, any of these canisters on a regular basis. They have what they call a heartbeat function that can invoke about every 700 milliseconds. So every 700 milliseconds, it just fires off. Now that's very expensive and gassy, as you might imagine, like you'd pay for those transactions. So we created a service, a canister, right? Which So it's also decentralized, but it can be a shared resource by other canisters and, and smart contracts to basically say, we will invoke you at specific intervals or in specific uh, circumstances. Like, you know, you can say, I want you to invoke me tomorrow at 3 p.m. Okay, we'll invoke you tomorrow at 3 p.m. Uh, and by making it a shared service, we get to spread out the cost, right, of all those transactions. And they're being shared by the consumers. And we do that through a token, right? So we act, create an honest to goodness utility token for doing this. So uh, we're not funding through an IC or anything, we just have people, you know, buy in using the native currency. They get their tokens. It's like going to the arcade and buying tokens, right, for, um, you know, at, at the machine. And then those tokens pay for the transactions they run later. And by doing that, you know, as people prepay for the transactions they want to have run later on, that is then feeding the kitty for what's going to allow this service to be able to run. So that was a way that we could substantially reduce the cost of making that whole thing go. And there seems to be quite a lot of opportunity for that. And I was just looking at a discourse at the definity.org or a discourse uh, forum, which a bunch of people were chatting about that, and that's pretty exciting. Real quick, unlike Ethereum, there is no gas limit on expressing your gratitude, so go ahead and hit that like button. Thank you. That's one thing. The second thing is, you know, really simplifying the API for it so that people would have a much easier time working with it because otherwise it was sort of a, a point of difficulty. So we presented this as an opportunity to make the internet computer autonomous because as most smart contracts are just completely passive, right? You need to wait for somebody to come along they're going to pay the gas fees. They're going to invoke the function on the smart contract. And then that gets invoked really at the point of network validation, say every 30 seconds, right? For Ethereum, but not every smart contract gets invoked, right? Only the ones people pay for. And so, so you can think of any function in Ethereum basically being an event handler, right, coming in from the outside. Whereas in the case of Defendi, it can be an event maker. And that means we can program bots to run on Divinity, which is a, a difficult challenge. And, and it's completely unique, as far as I know, across all other blockchain tech. So that's what we presented. It was cool. We were a team of two uh, compared to many other teams that were much larger than us. I certainly pitched the crap out of it. <laughs> <laughs> We're sorry they're good on it, but there were a few others that came in ahead of us and we came in fourth. As always, if you want to stay apprised of the latest around emerging tech, then go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Thanks.